Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios, and today we're going to go through the updates for the Smart device that's part of the Modular series. Now, we've taken the opportunity to update it to Live 10 standards. Um, realistically, the device was born out of a desire to do more with macros. We wanted to be able to turn the bass down and then progressively bring the mid down and then finally the, the treble. And the way we were able to mac map macros just really didn't allow us to do that. So we invented a device that allowed us to map outside of the rack that it was contained in. Um, we added smart graphs, we, we did various bits, and what we wanted was one master dial, one smart dial to create uh, transitions, curves, etc. We thought we got as far as we could with Smart 4, um, but we've got some really talented members in the team. So Sebastian from Chaos Culture, who created the multi-clip MIDI editor, and Freak Q is one of his as well. He's actually created a, a new way of drawing the graphs in a much smoother way, with a much greater response. And with the new elements of Live 10, we've also worked hard on the push integration as well. So let's have a look at where we started and uh, let's see how things have been updated. Let's have a look at it now. Okay, so what we're looking at is um, the, well, the oldest photo that I could find of the smart device, which is actually Smart 2. So it's a device that sits as a Max for Live audio device. It can sit on any track. You can use it to map any parameters in your set. As you can see here from the, the original, we had eight dials, eight smart graphs. Each dial you could set a minimum and maximum, so a range. But then the actual graph itself was, I believe, a multi-slider. So it had 127 uh, lines that you had to kind of click and drag and move. Uh, and yeah, it's quite janky, to be fair. Um, not the greatest of solutions. Let's bring you up to date. And we have Smart 5 here. Okay, so the device is fairly simple. It's still a Maxwell Live audio device, so it can sit on any track. That includes a MIDI track, uh, where it would sit after the uh, MIDI instrument and MIDI effects. It, in line with our latest devices, also has the feature whereby if you change your theme, the colors will update with it. Um, my personal preference at the moment, I'm going for mid-dark, so I'm going to leave it on there. Excellent. So you have one main smart dial, which will effectively control and send the same output as turning all eight curve dials at the same time. I'm going to set on top and bring forward the smart graph here. And we'll just play around mapping so you can see uh, what happens. Very simply, if I select a parameter and map it, it's going to be picked up here. And it's as simple as that. Select a map parameter, map, select a parameter, map, select parameter, map, and so on and so forth. Now, let's pick the first, and as you can see, we've uh, renamed these based on what it's mapped to. Now, that's important when it comes to the push to screen. So we select the first, and you'll have used graphs like this before. I can move the points, and if I double click, it creates a new one. Now, this is slightly different in that it would in the past kind of get stuck if you try and move a, a point that's after one prior to one, but now you can move as you want. And what you'll notice is that the bottom left, the value of the parameter, the one that it's mapped to, is actually changing and giving you visual feedback. So. Let's just unmap that for a second and map that to volume, for example. Now it's going to give you the value of what it's mapped to. The other good part of this is that you can use your Alt key. And if I position myself anywhere between two parts, pressing Alt and dragging, will enable me to draw a curve. So let's make that curve nice and funky. And of course, well, of course, if I wanted to move, the curve follows, and it will allow me to move around. So I'm able, therefore, to make that track volume, follow the curve as it moves up and 
down and then it's going to move back up slightly and then fall back down very simple now i can set the minimum and maybe reverse it in this manner so that will do the opposite and so on and so forth so you can even reverse it so setting your minimum maximum if you'd like it that way and reverse it and you can do this for each of the individual graphs all you need to do is select a particular graph it will then highlight itself in blue or i believe in orange in the lighter themes make your curve as you want them and realistically play around with how you would like these to work as you turn each individual dial or as you turn the main smart dial now the actual midi mappable elements within here we haven't midi mapped these particular uh, dials because they will change name uh, and we don't want to change the name of something that we're going to midi map because it would ruin the automation and could lead to crashes so what I wanted to also do is show you how this works with the push screen. Um, effectively, across the bottom here, we've renamed based on what it's mapped to. So let's open that and map base, base two. As you can see, the parameter names along the bottom correspond to what you mapped to. Now in bank one, effectively, we have the control of the main smart dial. So let's have a look here and that controls, as you can see, it's moving all of the, the parameters of the DJ sender there. And we have the ability, and we have the ability from uh, the push to actually change which curve and control them individually as well. And of course, that will tell us which one of those, uh, which they're actually mapped to. But if you go to the second bank, you also get the ability to control the individual curves and, of course, the naming of such underneath. Really, this one's down to your own imagination. We provide the device and you provide the mapping. Loads of things that I can think of that you can use them for. Um, even making things a little easier for you if you wanted to say create a curve and have that curve as a uniform uh, copied across so uh, I quite like the look of this first one let's go back sorry go back to it and let's copy it and we'll go to game two and let's paste it then um, maybe I decide that I don't like the look of it and I want to go back to the standard it's as simple to change it back to clear remove all of the mapping that you've made that's smart five brand new for ableton live 10 thanks for watching